cars in there. When she would walk through the factory, they had these big hoop skirts and hoop dresses. And as she went by the fires, they were kind of looked up a little bit. The guys would check out her ankles. And that was pretty risque in those days. So they were sitting there drinking their wines and they were wondering, why does this happen? And they decided that there must be some magical smoke in the fire. And that's what makes it happen. So after a few more bottles of wine, they think, well, if we build a bag where we trap this magical smoke, maybe man. They went to King Louis and they said, hey, we got this really great idea and this is what we want to do. King Louis says, no, you're noblemen, we're not going to risk your lives. I mean, we don't even know if you can breathe. Is there air there? What's there? We don't know what's there. It's an animal. So they got a chicken and goat and they put it in the basket and they let the fire stoke it up and they're wetting it through a little bit. And We're fine. They were alive, so we know that there's air up there to breathe. And uh, they all came out pretty good, except for the duck. He got stepped on by the goat on the land. So that was aviation's first climate. <laughs> so they went back to King Louis and says, "This worked. We want to try it." Now. He goes, "No, you're a nobleman. You can't do it. Go find somebody from your factory or somebody else to go do this." So they talked to the guys in the factory, and they had this one guy says, "Yeah, I'll do it for a promotion." So they built a little basket for him, built a little bit bigger bag, filled it all full of magical smoke, let it go, and he took off and he floated and he came back down and he landed and everything was okay. Well, we got a couple of things out of that flight. The first thing is the guy's name was Pilate Rosier. We translate Pilate to pilot, and that's why all his guys are flying aircraft. The other thing was Rosier um, really liked it. He wanted to go higher and he wanted to go further. So he thought, if I put gas in a balloon along with the, the hot air, then I can go higher and further. And he really had a great idea, it's just he used hydrogen. So the first time he really stoked up the fire, that was the end of Palacho and the balloon. <laughs> now what we got out of that is if you remember four or five years ago, in the race around the world, we were trying to fly a balloon all the way around the world and stop. The only way to do that was with Rosie A balloons. The, the top of the balloon was a separate container of about 300,000 cubic feet of, of uh, helium. And the bottom part was about 100,000 cubic feet of hot air, which had burners that would heat that. And that's about the size of Humpty, for what the small bottom size was. And what that did was that kept the gas at constant temperature. So at night it wouldn't cool and the balloon wouldn't sink out of the jet stream. So that's what allowed it to be able to fly okay, around the world. Um, so those are the two things we got from the first slide. Right the here. Well, the Montgomery Air Brothers got into it and they kept going the and flying around and there were more people got that into it. And they were flying in further another valley and another valley. Well, well, you guys want to come over? We're finally get into areas where nobody had heard of hot air balloons. Bring everybody. But we they knew campaign. from going to church on Sunday that the only thing that came out of the sky that was well, don't uh, do that one, breathing Say smoke what? and fire were demons and dragons. That was bad. So when the balloons landed, uh, yeah. they attacked the balloons Just with their bows and their sickles <laughs> and everything else. Yeah. They shred the balloons. You know where the are, so that's where we are. Again, the Montgolfier brothers were sitting in the parlor drinking their wine and wondering what they could do about that. And they came up with this great idea. So they went to King Louis and they said, you know, we can you have some of your wine with your crest on it. And uh, when we land, we'll, we'll show the people that we have this wine. You know, that we're noble men and they'll leave us alone. So, well, that worked. So they, when you come into land, they would lower the, the champagne and they would see the King Louis crest and they would leave them alone and they were doing fine. So ballooning started to spread all over Europe and as it started to spread all over Europe, the Irish found out that they were drinking. So the Irish jumped into the sport and the Irish always have a prayer or a song or a saying to go along with everything they do. So we'll, we'll go through that, we'll be do the toast in a minute. But right now what we're going to do is we're going to give each of you a glass. We're going to line you up and I'm going to pop a cork on the champagne bottle. Now, if you catch the cork in the glass, you get one second. If you don't catch the cork in the glass, well, that's why we were talking about changing the clothes. Oh, no! The, the, the crew has more fun with it when you don't catch it. So, you guys line up here. 
Okay, now I'm I'm actually filming this, so. Okay. All right. Wait, we're supposed to catch the cork? Yeah, it's supposed to catch the cork in your cup. Any questions? Everybody knows what they're supposed to do. Everybody knows the consequences. Oh, please. <laughs> no one caught it. No, I didn't even need to run after it. No one caught it. Picture of that? Oh. Somebody got a picture of that. That's I've never seen one. anybody do it that way. Look at that. That. But she had a hand down. You can't fool me. Uh, I was over there, but I'm gonna burp. <laughs> but no, nope. she had a hand Look down. At you. How did I have a hand? You guys I are saw a hand over there. there. You uh, fall uh, in the mud? <laughs> I swear, I only have one suitcase full of clothes here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, everybody up. Good job. <laughs> hold your hold your class now. We're gonna. Gonna tell you about this Irish prayer. <laughs> That's why it's slid off. <laughs> You're all greased up, girl. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. It's true. <laughs> I don't know how she did that. I've never seen anybody yeah, do that. Like, Thank you. Got it. Uh, <laughs> oh wait, we have higher you than your. I kind of also. If anybody <laughs> doesn't want alcohol, we have cider. She's experienced. Okay. <laughs> Here, I need more. And actually, that would be me. <laughs> I got two bottles. Can't make. Oh, I got another Experience. No. Oh, that cider. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I saw that. Oh no, I could actually do that. <laughs> oh. Welcome you with softness. The sun has blessed you with its warm hands. You have flown so high and so well that God has joined you in your laughter and set you gently back into the loving arms of Mother Earth. Welcome to Medina. Astrovia. Rich Corinthian letter to all of you. 